And this is the Rusty Humphreys Rebellion. We are powered by Right Wing News. You can see us on Liberty One TV and a number of other great Facebook pages. Tonight we are brought to you by a couple of things. Number one, my book, which we are going to have to talk about in a little bit because there's a little something going on on Facebook and I wanted to get your opinion on that in just a second Uh, but my book available at amazon is called seven ways to debate to win political debates with your liberal family and friends and still keep them as family and friends uh, written by yours truly rusty humphreys and it's available at uh, kindle at amazon in paperback in kindle and the audio version and it's uh you know a lot of cool people like this book look at this ben shapiro's written oh that's scotty nell hughes and Ben Shapiro's written a nice thing. And uh, oh, Stacy Dash, you remember her from lots of cool stuff like Clueless. All right, so we're going to, anyway, I got to talk about that book. That's This book's available. Also, the Hear Me Out app. Uh, it is a, a very important app. Look, at, you can see it on the screen if you're watching Hear Me Out, the Hear Me Out app. And that's where we can communicate. We have a lot of problems with major social media silencing and censoring free speech. And until that stops, we need to find other places to uh, be able to communicate. And the Hear Me Out app is it. Okay, let's see here. Um, Heidi is there. Katie's in the Bronx. Carol is a deplorable for New Jersey. Lance says, uh, hurt how liberals I work with yell at me because I support my president. I'm glad to see this. Stephen is uh, a proud St. Louis deplorable. How you doing? Uh, appreciate that. We got all these great people there. Um, uh, Justin is Utah. Um, love that book. Have read it multiple times. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, Nolan's in Missouri. Marie is for the, my president. Um, Mindy says, I'm looking for things to get better from South Wisconsin. Well, thank you very much. Okay, we're going to do uh, more in just a little bit. I want to uh, say hi at the, the nice folks also at American Journal Review and Liberty One TV. Got a lot of people there, too. Um, so all you got to do is just uh, check in, say who you are. Scott's from Florida. Gary's from Australia. Larry's from Indiana. Keith in California. Keith, do you think you should have a second uh, state there in California? We may get to that and more. Jane's in South Carolina. Billy Jean, who is not my lover, uh, is in Ohio. And uh, Chantel says I'm frozen on her page, so sorry about that. Okay. There has been a big scandal for years in Hollywood, as you know, and that is of child sex abuse. Uh, Most recently, Corey Feldman has come out. He's the guy in the, uh, I don't know what you call that, hat thing, Uh, said that he was sexually abused along with his friend Corey Haim. Uh, who's passed away from drug abuse, and they're blaming a lot of this sexual abuse on the guys in Hollywood, and that his death, Corey Haim's death, came from uh, this abuse. Um, I know a number of people in Hollywood. Um, one is uh, a, a dear friend. You remember, may remember her from the movie Pippi Longstocking. Her name is Tammy Aaron, and let me give her a quick call. And I want to get Tammy's take on all of these things that going on uh, in Hollywood. Uh, You know, we've got more of the the award season is going on. And, you know, what what is really happening with this child sex abuse? And is it really as bad as people are saying? Uh, Tammy Aaron is here. Tammy, how are you? I'm doing good. Can you see me? It's dark. You're very dark. What's up with that? Oh, it's so uh, um, I'm enjoying drinks. Okay. Well, I'm I, I, would, a meeting. <laughs> I would think a Hollywood starlet would want the lighting to be perfect so we could see you better. Oh, I'm so sorry. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll let, we'll let you have that, the sexy, sultry look. How's that? 
Yeah, well, the thing is, is that I like your show because you catch me and like, you know, not just like typical moments. That's I don't true. even get the questions in advance. Do you, is that normal? <laughs> Normally, do people give you questions in advance? Everyone does. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I never do. So I'm sorry about no, that. Sort of. No, I love it. I think it's fun, actually. OK, good. All right. Well, let's all for, right. first of all. So uh, you're, you're you're living the, the Hollywood lifestyle right now. You're in, in where are you? Uh, I am in West Hollywood and I'm having a meeting. So this is off topic of what we're talking about today, but I'm having a meeting with a friend who's part of the uh, medical marijuana space. Yeah. And um, so I'm getting involved with their company uh, as an investor and also supporting um, medical marijuana being okay. legal. Finally. Right, so is it going to be like called the Pippi Long Joint or something like that? <clears throat> no, no, it's an app. It's it's Tinder for for Mary. Okay, it's Tinder for Mary. Are you it's, now? See, I'm not a big marijuana guy. Although medical, I'm okay with. I believe if your doctor says you need to get medical marijuana, fine. But I but I also think you know I don't go to the uh, you know a club to get my metformin for type two diabetes. Well, yeah. Shouldn't you get you know you should go to Walgreens? That's my take, but that's okay. You don't have to believe that. I think it's it's up to individuals to make the decision for themselves. See, I keep telling see you're 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 getting new into politics. That's what you're saying is you're a libertarian. And that's That's right. And so uh, that that's okay. All right, let's talk about Hollywood and you you were Pippi Long. When did the movie that you were starring in Pippi Long's talking? When did that come out? Uh, so it came out in theaters in 13 languages in 1988, but, um, so I was cast in 87 and then I was done with the world tour five years after that. So it was five years of my life. Just that it, the two, it was a two picture movie, right, two okay. picture deal with uh, Columbia. Yeah. Did they do two? Uh, no. So I could Yeah, you got hosed. Second... <laughs> right? I had to sue Columbia Pictures because of what they did. What, what I did didn't they do? want to. What did they do? Well, uh, so I signed a two-picture deal, but there were a bunch of, um, you know, just illegal things that were done. And so there had to be this huge lawsuit and my contract was brought into it and all of this stuff. But the fact of the matter is, is that they shouldn't have taken a year and a half of pre-production. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, well, she's 13 years old and she's developing breasts. She can't play an 11-year-old. Well, that's fine and good. But then shouldn't I be given another movie after all the millions and millions of dollars I've made for you? Of course. I mean, you could have been the hot, sexy sultress at 18 or something, right? That is the reason we won the lawsuit. Oh, really? Because you were a hot, sexy sultress? No, because everyone could see what the politics and the behind the scenes stuff and all of the facts and all of the evidence. Uh, everyone could see it. Okay. Like on both sides of the lawsuit, so it wasn't a it wasn't a secret. Everyone knew. Well, um, so but whatever. Okay, I want to talk about Hollywood and the dark side for a second. By the way, if you're watching, uh, my name is Rusty Humphreys. This is Tammy Aaron. She played Pippi Longstocking, and you need to share this video right now because what we're going to talk about is important. Um, what is happening in Hollywood? Because. I mean, you know, the Harvey Weinstein thing came out and it was a big, big deal. For, did you know Harvey Weinstein at all? Yes. Did he hit on you? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to tell that what happened there? Well, my I have a, you know, I have a five year fiance and a five year lover two five year relationships. So 10 years, the five year lover. I met Harvey at Cipriani and he intentionally stood absolutely in the middle and between us before he introduced me to Harvey. And I got just a very weird feeling about it. And I realized later, oh, 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 he's trying to indicate that I'm available for work, but that don't, that I'm already spoken for. Okay. So everyone, the thing is, is, you know, I pointed some of this out on my Twitter, but it, it's, it's, it's hypocritical of Oprah and Meryl Streep to come out after everyone knows and then say, we know. We know nothing. We did not know. And it's like he, they could have said nothing, literally, both of them. Right. Meryl Streep and Oprah Winfrey, you didn't have to say anything. I love both of them. But to actually come out and go, oh, we 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 didn't. You, uh, we ain't know nothing. Oh. <laughs> OK. Did you, OK. When Harvey Weinstein was there and he was kind of near you, did you think he was hitting on you or are you too naive to pick up on that? 
No, no, I could feel his. Yeah, he's. He he looks at you in this very like creepy way. It's just a very like very much like he's almost like analyzing like looking you up and down like oh I really like her you know mm -hmm. and I like uh and I wanna you mm -hmm. know and mm -hmm. like he's, it's that kind of a look. All right, so you so you felt like he I mean he was kind of creeping on you. Yes. Okay. Um, did you go to his hotel room so you could get a, a part? No, but the thing that I I support these ladies. It's about time after a hundred years. You know, nineteen eighteen is when Columbia Pictures started at the Sunset Gower Studios, right? Okay. So a hundred years, this stuff has been happening. So finally, because of Harvey. People are coming forward and they're speaking up about it. That's wonderful. But I do have to wonder, like, at what point does a person not realize, okay, so we're not in the restaurant at the peninsula on the rooftop by the pool where instead uh, he wants me to meet him at his suite. Okay, I get to his suite. Okay, but then he opens the door and he's in. He's naked in a bathrobe. <laughs> well, maybe <laughs> he wanted to read a script. Maybe he was in character. No. <laughs> oh my god it's like come on <laughs> now okay I, you were a child actress N now nobody did anything like that to you especially when you were little did they um i was walked away from people very quickly like what does that mean can you tell me um and well yeah so when i was so obviously i mentioned as i'm turning 13 i'm i have breasts and so and i wore all these little spandex dresses Sylvester Stallone, though, is the biggest compliment. I love him. Um, he saw me on a... We were doing a German TV show together, and then Who's he that? saw me in... Sylvester Stallone. Oh, Stallone. Okay, yeah. Yeah. I, and, um, yeah, but he saw doing, me on doing, the... Tammy? Yes. How you doing? <laughs> Pee -pee. Sorry. He was so sweet. What yeah. a sweetheart. Um, no, he said he, he didn't realize I was American until he heard me, like, being interviewed on the, the show. So, um, yeah. But he was very, very sweet. But anyway, I, it, the whole going into puberty when you're 13 and you have boobs and you're referred to as sexy, that's just something that came along with me being me. Right. Okay. I'm but Sylvester gonna, Stallone you know? did not hit on you because he's been accused of something from 1982. He didn't. Okay. No. All right. Now, I know one of the guys that, that really said something to you that stuck with you uh, was Michael J. Fox, right? Yes. Well, he said it to my mom, actually. What did he say? He said, so he said, you keep, he pulled my mom aside. So first I'm like, this is like my childhood crush. Okay. Okay. Michael J. So Fox. Anyway, so much. Okay. So anyway, he pulls my mom to the side and he says, you keep an eye on her. And she really tried to like figure out like exactly what he was trying to say. And when she spoke to my dad about it, she, I think was much, much more clear, uh, that there's going to be people that are going to be amazing, mm -hmm. but there's going to be some people that are not going to be safe for your daughter to be around. And you need to be careful and mindful. Right. They give you so much freedom. Here's the thing. I've been given so much, so much freedom and the, the experiences and the everything, you know, treatment. So I enjoy it. Right. But also I was kept somewhat normal, hmm. somewhat down to earth, not, you know, feeling like, oh, if I don't become like the biggest or, you know, the the this many Meryl Streeps or whatever, if I don't do that, then I'm not good enough. That's mm. not where I came from. I came from just this beautiful little five year old who was like, I want to be a movie star. Right. Can I do that? <laughs> and you and you were able to do it. All right, let's talk about, OK, in the 80s, um, Corey Feldman and Corey Haim. These were the two Corys, man. They were cool. Yeah. And Corey Feldman's been going around saying that he was abused and that yeah. he knew names. And I know you know this story. First of all, you hung out with those guys during that time, right? Yeah, we all went to the soda pop clubs. Soda pop club. What's that? Um, well, there's one. Oh, one of my earbuds. Um, so there's a guy that Corey accuses of being inappropriate. And I believe him. Okay. Um, this guy had so it was a bunch of us you know uh, Alyssa milano and soleil moon fry and drew barrymore and corey and corey and you know all of us the cool kids club yeah with denny lewis all of us yeah so uh -huh. we would go to these little underage clubs where our parents could go with us 
Um, uh, yeah. So now, when you say soda pop, were they really soda poppy, or were you really doing like? And were they drinking no one and ever, stuff? Uh, no one ever offered me alcohol or drugs. Okay. Never. Okay. Never. Good. So I don't know. I don't. I can't speak but for the, what but happened the other to them. Boy, I mean, the other kids. I mean, were there the core the Corys? And again, people are going, "Oh, come on, this is Hollywood. We don't care." It is important. Because Hollywood is some, is what guides our culture, whether you like it or not, number one. And number two, we're yeah. talking about abuse here of children. So yeah. do you think something happened to these young men? Uh, of course it did. Okay. It's just a matter of the specifics, but we all know what happened. I mean, it doesn't take... It, right? So, But it's great that there's awareness being shifted, but I just hope that people don't just... You know, I mentioned I'm also on the side of the gentlemen that are being accused of things and then wind up losing parts of their career mm -hmm. due to people just accusing them. Right. That's not fair either. No, it's not. By the way, Tammy Aaron you is know? here. You may remember Tammy as uh, Pippi Longstocking. Uh, she, uh, in 1988 is when the movie came out. It was the most popular of all the Pippi Longstocking movies, and she's uh, done some great things. Um, but we're talking about now... Corey Feldman is going around saying he's giving death threats. He needs a lot of money. Uh, his best friend, Corey Haim, was, was basically <laughs> murdered. And he wants to get this message out, and people need to send him money. What's the story here? <laughs> well, that, why is that funny? It's because it's... <laughs> <laughs> All right. There's so much information that's been given to me where I'm just like, oh, Jesus, another day, another bit of more information about this story. OK, um, look, there was a documentary film that Corey completed, Corey Feldman, before uh, the Harvey Weinstein scandal broke. OK, when and Judy Haim, by the way, was against this film. She wanted nothing to do with that's it. That's Corey she, Haim's mother, right? That's right, and she now has a, a sued Corey Feldman with a gag order of leave my son's image and name out of it. So now websites are being pulled down that are marketing Corey Haim merchandise. Oh, okay. So, now why would the mom not want to have this story get out and and have people understand what the, the torture and the, the abuse that her son took at the hands of uh, these Hollywood perverts? I what I can what I can deduce from it because she's very lovely, she's a lovely woman, is that it only happened once and that Corey Feldman is really blowing this out of proportion, saying it saying that it was an ongoing thing. That they were being sexually harassed like uh, on a constant basis, and yet Judy Haim is saying, My son told me what happened on one occasion and that's exactly what happened. That's it. Is it so, possible, though? I mean, you didn't tell everything to your parents. I know I didn't tell everything to my parents. And I'm guessing a guy like that wouldn't tell his mom, yeah, it happened every week. Or maybe he would. I don't know. I, I agree. Uh, yeah, there's no way to know, but mm -hmm. it's still not fair. There has to be someone to at least, you know, look at all of this and go, look, no one should be losing their parts of their career due to accusations. There should be some process from here forward if you want to change a system you have to have a process you have right. to have a solution you know so right now it seems a little bit disconnected that it's but, easy to get a it's easy to get a headline today by doing hashtag me too right well everyone's saying me too me too i could be saying me too all day long but obviously it's true obviously you know guys are saying that they will give you this, they'll give you that, they'll do this for you. Do that's that's a constant thing. But you also have to use your mind because if you're if you're showing up to someone's suite at the peninsula and the, the guy opens the door in a bathrobe and he's naked, uh, what do you think? That might be the time to turn around, right? Okay. Yes. Right. Okay. Now you you you've you've said something here. You told me off the air and. That Corey Feldman had this movie of, uh, done. The documentary, yeah. And he, but he's still asking for money. Yeah. That's the reason so many people are upset with him. So I don't think he's a bad person, but I will say he, the documentary was done before Harvey Weinstein was announced. And once Harvey Weinstein was announced, it was the catalyst for him to say, oh, you know, I'm you know, reopening all of this stuff about me. Okay, that's cool, Corey. That's fine. But he monetizes it every single time. And that's the thing that upsets people is that instead of doing charity, like genuine charity and philanthropy, where you don't expect anything in return, 
he is constantly monetizing it through the book, through the reality series, through the documentary that he told no one about. Then through Indiegogo, he has a flex account that keeps all the money, 100% of the money, no matter what he does. Even if he does no movie, he keeps 100% of all of the hundreds of thousands of dollars that people have donated, which I believe is about a quarter of a million dollars plus, and he doesn't even have to do anything. Oh, my gosh. So you're telling me you think Corey Feldman is trying to scam the public. That's what everyone's saying. Oh, my gosh. That's yeah, pretty. I mean, imagine over, the over number sexual of people assault, that are that's talking cra- to me. Oh, that's so crappy. Yeah. They're, they're ta- they won't tell you, but they're mad at you for, for exposing this? No, they're calling me oh. going, can you believe? No, everybody's so upset with Corey, but no one knows what to do about it. Right. You know, because the, like, the press was like in up until a certain point going, oh, you know, he's got his tour going on and all the drama, the drama. And now he wants $10 million, the drama, the drama. But now it's like everything is kind of calmed down. And now everybody's going, this is just, what is this? Like, what is the purpose right. of doing this anyway? We can all imagine what happened, Corey. But having it 35 years later and going, oh, yeah, now I'm a crusader for, you know, children's welfare. It's like, but you had tons of charities come to you over the past three decades asking you, will you help our nonprofit that helps children? Right. And he constantly turned them down. <laughs> so I find it hard to believe if you only do it to monetize it, then fine. Then that's that's cool. That, that's your perspective. I just don't believe in that. Right. Tammy Aaron's her name. You remember her as Pippi Longstocking. Right now we're talking to her live uh, from North Hollywood where she's at some fancy restaurant. Uh, what kind of food do they serve yeah. there? <laughs> we're having lobster. We're going to the mm. Palm. Do mm-hmm. you know, you have to like see the five pound lobster that I wound up with at the at the Palm last time. It looks like a, like a, like a chihuahua. Oh, it's, so, <laughs> it's so delicious. I love it. Tammy's living large. Okay, so... Um, is there, I mean, is the Me Too thing ending in Hollywood? I mean, like, for example, I just got a, David writes, it's called due process. Innocent until proven guilty. The people are violating the Fifth Amendment by making them guilty by public opinion. Um, yes. Dwayne says you need to admit that this is, problem is in Hollywood is a lot bigger than you're putting on. Uh, what do you say to both of those? No, definitely. The, pro- the problem has been here, if, did I not say, a hundred years. Right. Okay, so I... I I should have mentioned this earlier. The chairman's office at Sunset Gower Studios in the chairman of Columbia Pictures, which was Columbia Pictures, he opened a door, flipped down the stairs, and he's right there in the ladies' dressing room, in Mm. the movie actress's dressing room. Okay, so it's been going on since the beginning. But for people to comply with uh, an unusual choice like that and then for career advancement, then complain later. It's like, you know, come on. I know it's a shock that there's sirens going off in California. I know that's probably didn't happen there very often. Oh, yeah, whatever. (laughs) (laughs) All right, let's see here. Uh, Let's see. Uh, Frank wants to know, uh, this this is Tammy Aaron. Uh, Oh, Ginger says, um, Corey probably has increased costs associated with security and future jobs, etc. Cut Corey a break, Tammy Aaron. Um, Okay, so I've been friends with him and I've been to his house on many occasions. I'm I honestly I'm sorry. I can't when I sued Columbia Pictures. Okay, was there ever a moment where I'm like, oh, my God, I'm winning against this juggernaut called Columbia Pictures and I'm winning this lawsuit. Am I? Oh, my. Are they going to kill me? No, there was never once a moment. where I was like, oh, Jesus, my you know, I think that he's just he's exploiting everything he possibly has. In order to, you know, really rehash what happened 35 years ago and maybe transition into philanthropy or charity, which uh, go go right ahead and do whatever it is that you want to do. But don't pretend that you're doing one thing when you're actually doing something very self-serving. Pamela says you're talking too much. You're going to be out of work. Oh, um. Is she that, doesn't know. She doesn't know. Are, are um, you concerned about what that? I do. Are you concerned about work and and t- speaking out against Corey Feldman and and talking out about uh, sexual harassment and things in in Hollywood? Does that scare you? No, it doesn't scare me at all. No, why? No, 
Well, the jobs that I have, like the most recent movie I did for Warner Brothers, they wanted me specifically. So that's why it doesn't bother me. Okay. People can say, okay, so Tammy has a different take on it than Corey Feldman because she wasn't molested. Right. Because, you know, they are friends. And because Corey Haim was not friends with him at the end of his life. Right. And not, all of this stuff is coming out. And yet Corey keeps hustling, hustling, hustling people. If he wants to do that, go ahead. Don't give him all your money, whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't care. But... For everyone else to stay quiet and to not say, hey, there's something up here, like he has a flex account, meaning he can say I want to raise $10 million, but a quarter of a million without having to do any work is the consistent message that people keep telling me. Right. All right. Tammy Aaron is her name. You might remember her as Pippi Longstocking. Uh, very, very successful and a great actress and, uh, and very cool and again, she's somebody that has grown up in Hollywood and has lived this stuff. And basically, your message is, number one, um, Corey Feldman is taking people for a ride. Don't give him money. That's number one, right? It's up to you. Okay. Number two, what's got on your, uh, on your mind on this stuff? This, this Me Too thing, it's important, but is, this is no surprise. <laughs> yes, that's exactly right. Okay. No and surprise. No, no, nothing no, new. No surprise. Nothing new there. And this whole idea that uh, Oprah and and these Hollywood people are coming and going, golly jeepers, I ain't know nothing about, uh, about uh, Weinstein is just silly. Of course they knew, right? Of course they know. Everyone knows. Of course they know, not, but they're protecting their image, so I think people understand why they're doing it. Do but you, still, of course okay, they know. Okay, as Come somebody in, the, in Hollywood, uh, do they really think Oprah should be president? I'm sorry. I love Oprah, but I don't think so. Well, not you. I mean, but you're going to, you're going to a you know, party at the Palm tonight having five-pound lobsters. Is that what yes. they're talking about there, your rich friends? Yeah, Oprah should be president. Uh, okay, so... It depends. I don't speak to people about politics unless they speak to me about that okay. topic. Um, so, yeah, some of my friends are very proud to be Republicans and some are Democrats. But, yeah, I don't really bring things like that up. Okay. It's, for me, no. It's not, no, because I, I told you I'm a newbie. That's why I'm, it's so fun to be on your show is that right. I'm like a newbie at politics. So to finally have an opinion on these topics is really, uh, you know, exciting and fun for me. I think the first time you ever really talked about politics was on my show about a year ago. Right? Yeah. And I called you yeah. a libertarian and it ticked you off. You thought I was insulting you. I thought you were always calling me a liberal. And I'm like, wait, I'm a liberal? And I'm like, oh, am I looking silly now? No, you're a libertarian. <laughs> All right. Uh, Tammy, where you've got a website where you sell uh, pictures and movies yeah. and things. Where can people find you? So um, it's uh, Tammy Aaron Shop, T-A-M-I-E-R-I-N-S-H-O-P.com, mm -hmm. TammyAaronShop.com. And that's movies, DVDs, sexy tapes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Tammy, the, the, t there's kind of two sides of Tammy. She's very sweet and very nice and innocent and, and getting political. And then there's <laughs> naughty, the naughty side. There's, there's naughty Tammy. All right. Hey, Tammy, I love you, sweetheart. I appreciate you. Go have a big old lobster and a steak, and uh, we'll get together and hang out sometime soon, okay? Sounds good. All right. Thank Take you. Care. Thanks for having me. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 That's uh, Tammy Aaron, and she's awesome and very cool. And uh, wish her nothing, nothing but the best. Okay. Um, let's see here. Frank says, sorry, unfortunately, that is what Hollywood is. It's like pay, play to pay. Yeah. She's, uh, Frank thinks she's only going to get minor roles after this. Uh, Mike's checking in. Charles checking in. Carolyn thinks Oprah is a racist. Let's see here. Millie loved Pippi Longstocking. Watched her when she was a kid. Teresa says, thank you for being honest. Lynn thinks that uh, Tammy was drunk. Oh, come on. It's, I don't think she, she wasn't drunk. Then. All right. I want to ask you another question. Um, on Facebook, I'm sure you have friends. And not everybody is a conservative and not everybody agrees with you, Right. By the way, um, would you please check in? Have you shared the video tonight? And would you please check in? Are you, do you believe her when she says Corey Feldman is trying to rip people off and get money just so he can put out a movie about sex abuse that he's already done? 
Anyway, Frank thinks uh, Facebook is trying to uh, zuck me. Anyway, I want to know your if you give me your quick comments, your thumbs ups, your sads. What did you think about the, the interview with Tammy Aaron and what she had to say? As we move on, you've got Facebook friends. I do too. What's different for me is that as a conservative talk show host, I got a target on my back every day. Every day. And, you know, all everybody knows what I do. And so if they agree with me, they want to talk about politics and be conservative. If they disagree with me, they want to fight. And I don't like fighting, I, especially if it's with friends. Richard thinks Hollywood's a joke. Shanice says, really rusty. Yes, I don't know what that meant, but okay. Gary says, shared it's a good show. Thank you. Wayne thinks she was great. She's awesome. And yeah, she is putting her neck out on the line. She is putting her career on the line to be talking about, you know, the dark side of Hollywood. Um, Mary says, never seen her before. She seems nice. Lance says, not very well spoken, but she knew them. And it's kind of cool. Lance, she wasn't, you know, here, you know what I like about Tammy? Tammy's just Tammy. You know, she's not, she wasn't trying to put on a show. She didn't get all dressed up just to be on TV. She didn't have make me give her the questions. She's just talking like a regular person. That's how regular people talk. And I'd much rather have a regular person like Tammy Aaron than some of you know, some political person with a Harvard. Let me tell you, there's the GDP, 45, 5.2. Anyway, shut up. All right, so something popped up on my Facebook page. And I only want to show you part of it because I don't want to get anybody's names in this because that's not fair. These are people I know and have known most of my life. Um, but a friend of mine posted, and I hope I've hid his name because that's not fair. I'm embarrassed by him, and I wish he would find a way to a fiery car crash. Rhymes with hump. Please find a tree. I find that very disappointing. Um, other comments. Now I grew up in the Seattle area, South of Seattle. So there is a lot of liberals there, of course, but how do you respond to something like that? How do you come back? Because I don't want to just say up yours person. I don't agree with. These are people I, I care about. And some of the comments are pretty bad. Um, Let's see here. There's one guy I've known since elementary school. Um, saying some pretty naughty stuff. Oh, I, uh, talking about Barack Obama. Was it just his skin color or his success that you didn't like? Really, Greg? I'll give first name there. Really? Or another thing. Um... Yes, Trump is a piece of blank for sure. Okay. You know, I find it disappointing. And it's one of the reasons, I'll show the book, it's one of the reasons why I wrote this book, Seven Ways to Win Political Debates with Your Liberal Family and Friends and Still Keep Them as Family and Friends. The problem with this entire debate, it goes right for emotion. Walmart gave out select bonuses and then they demoted thousands of managers and laid off 11,000 employees to pay for it. That's not true. Obama's terrific, but the world hates us now and families are being torn apart at the same time. I'm sorry. You know, the big story that's on Facebook everywhere today, past couple days. This poor guy's been living in America for 30 years and is... He got deported and his family, they're just broken up and it's just not right. What the hell have you been doing for 30 years? Sneaking around America. You haven't filled out any paperwork. You haven't done what it takes to become a citizen. 30 years wasn't enough for you. When is enough enough? How much longer do I need to do this? How much longer do we need to wait? I think 30 years is pretty good. He is a dreamer. We're all dreamers. 
right? Frank says the only thing Obama was successful at was uh, doubling the national debt. Mike thinks there are haters everywhere. Wayne says, I just tell them it's their opinion. Okay. I'm not going to do it on this Facebook page, but there are a couple of things. C. C. Drew writes, I bought your book and use your points. It was helpful in my circle. The point in all of this is to understand not just debate techniques, but understand the mentality of what you're dealing with and ways of persuading them to your cause. There are some people, like my friend Greg, no persuading him. There's nothing you can do. He's drank the Kool-Aid. He's chugged it down. He's doubled down with a, a, a case of, of hater aid, and it doesn't matter what you say to this guy, okay? It's not a guy that you should even worry about. That's somebody you just ignore. But there are nice people in the middle. Nice people that hear these things about Trump and they go, oh my gosh, Trump dealt with Russians and he's trying to sell out America for money and, and, and he's undoing Obama's wonderful laws. Okay, Obama's not supposed to make laws. He's president. The president doesn't create laws. Congress did. And when Congress didn't create a law, he said, you know what? I'm just going to make it up right now. Just going to make up the law, and uh, we're going to let uh, we're going to uh, turn a blind eye to illegal immigrants. And Trump went, wait a second. That's unconstitutional. You can't do that. But instead of just saying, you know what, like Obama, I'm not just going to cross it out. I'm actually going to give Congress an order to do their job. You dummies in Congress need to figure out what in the hell is going on and fix it. That's your job. That's what Trump did. Now, you may be, and, and by the way, talk about persuasion. Again, the Democrats are experts in persuasion using emotion, emotional terms. Cory Booker, when he was attacking uh, uh, the, uh, the woman the other day, it was all based in emotion. You know, here's, here's another one, okay? Okay. Um, you know, again, Democrats base all their all of their things in emotion. Now, if I want you to picture things that Republicans did, and, and by the way, dreamers, it's beautiful. They just want to dream, dream of having a better life. Okay, it has nothing to do with their family snuck them into the country. No, they're dreamers. Okay, um, however... The parents were legally responsible for them. They were under the age of 18. My daughter's under the age of 18. She can't buy a car without me being there. She can barely go to movies. She can barely order from a restaurant without me there. Certainly can't go across the border of another country without my being responsible for her. And those parents knew when they illegally crossed the border with those children that they were breaking the law and the parents are responsible. And then, you know, you're and then they're about to graduate from college. And it wasn't until then that they found out they weren't citizens. Oh, so it's our fault as America that their parents are liars. Because their parents lied to them for decades, we're supposed to say, oh, well, I'm sorry, you're right. Uh, we're just going to make you a citizen, and, and we'll, we'll pay for that college, too. Why not? Well, you want to throw in a car? Why not? If Democrats want to shut the government down over trying to defend people who are here illegally and to defend sanctuary cities, where, which really is the most racist of any city. What? We're the least? We're the most tolerant? No. You have special laws for people based on the color of their skin. San Francisco, Oakland. If I was to commit a crime, I promise you would call the authorities on me. But because I'm not of a certain color, um, I don't get that same benefit, but people of other color, uh, they don't get turned in. It's not right. 
Greg says, go ahead, shut down the government. Show everybody it really doesn't change much. That's right. Gail thinks I'm on tonight. Thank you, Gail. I appreciate it. Uh, Don says, I've got nothing against legal immigration. Illegal is illegal. It's against the law. If dreamers want to be legal, they should go through the process. Do it right. Make it right. That's my two cents worth. Don, you're 100% correct. 100% correct. Randy says, uh, my daughter can't even go across the state, uh, state lines without parental consent. That's true. All right, I want you to watch a video that just came out, and I want you to think if Barack Obama was made into a statue like this, what would people say? Would it be just, oh, you're racist? Look at this. It's shameful. Look at this. Mm-hmm. Slipping them off. The emperor has no balls. Why don't you get stuff out of the way? All right. All right. Now they're swearing. Okay. All right. That, that's enough. They're trying. Again, it's just, it's gross. It's wrong. It is. Uh, again, you know, I understand um, not liking a president. I understand uh, making fun of leaders, parody, satire. That's okay. But when it is as purposefully disrespectful based solely on emotion. I mean, we have to be honest. Uh, The country has done surprisingly well in the past year with all of the uh, predictions that we would be doing poorly. Oh, that was Obama. Oh, it was all Obama. He fixed everything. The economy has been crap for the past eight years. Unemployment's been out of control. Black unemployment, out of control. The racial divide, the the wedge has been put between us. It's been wrong what Obama did. Oh, he was the greatest ever. No, you emotionally think he's cool. He comes out, he's got a swagger. Hey, I'm Obama. Yeah, I'm cool. I'm on with David Letterman on Netflix. You know why? Because I'm cool. Hey, he's the first president I know of that bragged about smoking dope in Hawaii. First president I know about that bragged in his book that he did the nose candy. First president I know of that didn't really go to class in college. Got away with it. Well, we don't want to talk about that, right? Megan McCain, who I am not a fan of. Um, somebody wrote her some pretty good questions to the guy that wrote that book, um, Fire and Fury. I thought she did a pretty good job on this. I guess this is on The View. I never watched The View, but uh, she was pretty good. Let me play you this uh, clip here on the Rusty Embers Rebellion. Meg McCain grills Fire and Fury author over fact. You know, Michael, errors. your credibility is being questioned. Trump says the book is full of lies, misrepresentation. But, but let, let's remember, Let me finish, let, please. Who my credibility is being questioned uh, by. New York Times, Maggie uh-huh. Haberman, New York Times, John Martin, David Brooks, CNN's Allison Camerata, Tony Blair, Tom Barak, Kate Walsh, Anna Wintour, all denying quotes. Washington Post reporter Mark Berman was in the Four Seasons the same time as Ivanka Trump. You admitted to mixing up Mark with Mike Berman. Trump needed the Constitution explained to him. His advice Advisor Stan Nunberg has fabricated stories in the past. This goes on and on. The age of the White House communications director. There are a lot of factual errors in here. So I want to know from you is, what do you say to the people? I regret mixing up Mike Berman and Mark Berman. The Berman brothers are um, have my apology. You know, I think this hits us. I read your book, and I think this hits a special place for me because my family has been the subject of a book like this, Game Change. And Game Change was written, ironically, people like Anna were asked, and thank you for not giving interviews to those guys, a lot of oh, disgruntled staffers. Traditionally, in situations like this, it's the disgruntled staffers who aren't loyal to their principal that give interviews like this. So I'm curious, when you talk about staff, you didn't talk to his cabinet. Did you ever interview Jared and Ivanka? And how can I trust some of these quotes when, again, Tony Blair, Tom Barak, Kate Walsh, Otto Wintour, all these people who are denying these quotes and stories attributed you know, to them? You know, I think you have to look at the, uh, the also the other people who are not denying and actually the, the great number of, of people. You know, and and there were, I mean, there was initially there was there was people questioned. There's a begins with a dinner with Roger Ailes and 
and Steve Bannon. Was that Bannon. off the record? Quite frankly, had you invited me to your house at any point before this book, I would have said, hell no, of course not. I don't go to journalist's house and start dishing about anything private in the political circles I'm in. I'm just confused. Were you friends with Steve Bannon and Roger Ailes beforehand? And you were like, come to my house for an off the record dinner and then you reported on it? Or was it uh, on I, the record? Yes, no, a fair, fair question. And I'll tell you what happened. This was actually an off the record dinner. But two things happen. That's why people hate journalists, by the way. It's why I don't believe in the concept of off the record. This right here. All right. Somebody wrote some very good questions for Megan McCain, and she did a very good job on that one. Normally, uh, I think she's an airhead. That's me. All right. Um, do me a favor. Please share this video. There was some important stuff on there today. You know, it's very easy for conservatives to go, oh, it's just Hollywood. I don't care about that. I don't watch movies. Well, guess what? That's why we're losing the war of the culture in America. My friend Andrew Breitbart said it best. Hollywood controls the culture of America. And until we wrap our minds around it, we will continue to lose the cultural battle. So, when I had Tammy Aaron on, and if you missed it, she was uh, Pippi Longstocking in the uh, 1988 version of Pippi Longstocking. And she talked about the stuff that went on. And yes, of course, everybody knew Harvey Weinstein was doing this stuff. And to be careful, because people are profiting now on these child sex abuse stories. Corey Feldman, she says, and according to Corey Feldman's uh, friend, Corey Haim's mother, it's a bunch of uh, hooey, not that the sex abuse didn't happen, but taking people's money for this. So we need to be careful about that. You need to be careful with how you engage people online. If there are people that are unchangeable, people whose minds are closed, they don't want to talk, don't bother with them. Ignore them. You'll never turn them around. But there are people who are friends. They're kind. They actually want to learn something. Don't just give them facts and figures, but teach them using emotional terms, terms like dreamers. Hit them in their heart and show them what the Democrats are trying to do. And again, these aren't Democrats today. These are communists. Today's Democrats are socialists. They're communists. These are not the same Democrats as 15, 20 years ago or your grandma's Democrats. We can make a difference, though. We just have to keep out there and keep telling the truth and keep letting people know why President Trump isn't doing that bad of a job, why Obama really did cause problems. Bill Clinton, oh, Bill Clinton, he was great. Heck, last night on this show, we had Buzz Patterson on, the guy who carried the nuclear football for President Clinton, who told us that Clinton admitted to him months later that he lost... The nuclear launch codes lost them. First president in history to have lost the nuclear launch codes and nobody talks about it. Heck, we were going to give him, let him be the first lady. Let her wife, let his wife come in there. Dino says the Democrat Party's never been for America ever. Dino, I don't believe that. There were good people back in the day. There were people that were trying to do things for the little guy. That's long, long gone. You look at the places where Democrats have power and control, and they are assholes. They're disasters in most places. So we're going to keep holding the power accountable. And if Trump does something bad, we'll hold him accountable too. But one more before I let you go. And that is Dianne Feinstein. Oh, the great Dianne Feinstein. Oh, the Democrats love Dianne Feinstein. And Dianne Feinstein is one of those people out there saying, you know what? We need to have DACA. We need to let these dreamers stay. We need more amnesty. And what a lie it is because, well, that's not how she's always been. Check this one out. I think we can enforce our borders. I think we should enforce our borders to have a situation where 40% of the babies born on Medicaid in California today are born of illegal immigrants creates a very real problem for the state, which is in deficit. Look, and of course you can enforce the borders. Let me finish. I agree. We have 17% but 
of our prison population at a cost of 300 million a year you being illegal them. immigrants who come here and commit felonies mm -hmm. that's not what this nation but is all about all right you tell them diane feinstein what Good happened to, what England. happened to, what happened to that diane feinstein that's what i want to know what happened to democrats why did they decide to sell out their souls in our country for their power that i don't get and that is one of the great shames of our generation. Anyway, do me a favor if you would please. Would you please follow me on the Hear Me Out app? You download it on your smartphone. You go to if you're Apple, you got you got your uh, Apple Store, your iTunes Store, your, your App Store, uh, Android, same thing. Find the Hear Me Out app download it find me rusty humphreys and follow me this is a way we can communicate if these big social media companies continue to censor and that's what's happening people are going oh there's not as many people watching because facebook is censoring the speech so we need to continue to go around them how do we do that your engagement makes a difference. Have you checked in? Did you say who you were? Have you shared the video? It's so important. Have you told people, hey, there's some truth being told there. 9 p.m. in the East, 6 p.m. in the West. Tomorrow's Friday. I don't do Fridays unless something big happens. Check my I, my uh, podcast out. You can find that at iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, any place you get great podcasts. It's called the Rusty Ambrose Rebellion. I want to thank my friends at Right Wing News. I want to thank my good friends at Liberty One TV. I want to thank my good friends at the Hear Me Out app. And I want to thank you for going to Amazon right now and getting my book, Seven Ways to Win Political Debates with Liberal Family and Friends and Keep Them as Family and Friends. It's not that expensive. It's in paperback. You can download it right now if you want on Kindle or you can listen to me and my beautiful tones doing the audiobook. That's it. May God bless you. May God bless America. My name is Rusty Humphreys, and this is the Rusty Humphreys Rebellion.